Way back in the summer, we cleared this dead tree to build a woodpecker trail. Who knows how long the actual tree was laying there, but the timber we cut from it certainly was solid. And strangely, full of perfectly usable wood. Well, as it turns out, Berm Peak is a gold mine of white oak, which, according to Wikipedia, is naturally rot resistant. It doesn't look bad at all. Now, I'm not so sure how rot resistant it actually is, but wherever we find this stuff, it seems to be more or less intact. With the discovery of this plentiful resource right under our noses, I wanted to find a way to use it for more than just caging landings. So today, we're going to actually build something out of that very first piece we cleared from Woodpecker Trail. But first, we need to move it down to the gravel road. <sighs> You can barely fit a hand truck down this single track, let alone a UTV. So it took a little creativity and a whole lot of struggling to get this chunk of dead tree back to the gravel road. This winch I'm using gets its power from any cordless drill. On the surface, it seems almost too useful, but it's actually pretty limited. This winch has a built-in torque limiter, which keeps you from pulling anything bigger than this. I guess it's technically dragging it uphill over here. There's a little grade reversal. With a hard 500 pound limit, you cannot rely on this winch for vehicle recovery or pulling larger chunks of timber like we did with the Gitter. But for shifting things around or positioning heavy logs for trail building, this thing could prove useful. Okay. Am I going to have to winch this thing the entire way down the trail? After a long and bumpy ride on the struggle bus, I finally got that chunk of timber down to the gravel road. Whew, okay. That worked. And now you might be wondering why I didn't simply cut this up where I found it. And you know what? That's a really good point. But our milling operation is going to require a level surface, as well as shore power. Because in addition to that drill winch, there's something else we need to test out today. I first saw this chainsaw mill on Wrangler Star's YouTube channel and bought it for under $30 on Amazon. It attaches to any chainsaw bar with set screws and uses a 2x6 as a guide rail. By tacking it down with a couple of screws, you can square up timber and turn it into dimensional lumber. To actually cut this waterlogged oak, I'm using a plug-in electric chainsaw that was under $100. Seems like an odd choice, but a gas saw that can run continuously without overheating is actually pretty expensive. There's also the noise factor of running a two-stroke saw continuously for hours on end. Not very neighborly, but my electric milling operation was far from perfect. First of all, I kept blowing the breaker and needed to use a different circuit with higher amperage. Then the extension cords themselves started giving me problems, which isn't a surprise given the current this thing draws. This saw also comes with a self-sharpening chain. It's a pretty interesting concept, but I suspect that's how they make their money back on this thing. Replacement self-sharpening chains cost $30, which is double a normal chain. So I'll pass on that and install a normal ripping chain when this wears out. 
Another limitation is the 18-inch bar. Planks like we're cutting are fine, but you're not going to start slabbing with this. But once I got the bugs worked out, this $130 electric mill was totally usable. In fact, I was able to get 2x12 planks out of this thing. And after a little cleaning up on the table saw, I had more than enough usable wood to actually make something. It may come as no surprise that we're building a kicker ramp. It's my favorite thing to build, so what better to test our first batch of lumber from the Burn Peak Sawmill. I've never been one to waste lumber, or so I thought. But the truth is, two-by stock from the store is just so cheap that an extra piece here and there doesn't mean much. This project forced me to use materials more wisely. Because I feared running out of wood and having to mill more of it, I found myself maximizing the wood I had, and even altering the project itself to use less material. I ripped offcuts into smaller planks, and spaced those planks considerably further apart than normal. Hardwood is heavy, especially when it's not fully dried out. But our rough cut hardwood has quite a bit of character. This thing looks like a medieval bike ramp, as if it were designed to perform beheadings on. Because the wood is rough cut, it actually provides more traction for bike tires. And because I plan on leaving this outside, we'll get to see just how durable this wood actually is. And since this ramp stands on its own, we can experiment with it. So I want to try something really messed up on this jump. Um, when I'm about to try something really stupid, I need someone to egg me on. So I got on video chat with Porter. You can't hear the sound, but it went something like this. Don't worry, Seth, you got this. All right, I'm going to try. Crap, did you see my front wheel hit that tree? Yeah, I was going to say something about that. Why don't you try lowering your rear wheel? All right, here goes. It'll make more sense later why I wanted to try and do a 360 right here, but I guess it's kind of tight. If you grew up around sawmills, this was probably not very interesting, but to me it's witchcraft. I always thought lumber came from the store, but now I know it's a relatively simple process to get it from dead trees. And as a result, we have a sweet looking kicker that was actually born on Berm Peak. I plan to install this kicker at the start of a much bigger feature. 
which we'll begin building once the weather becomes more predictable. Until then, I'm going to run the Berm Peak Sawmill until we have enough planks to do it. And when all is said and done, we'll have the craziest feature we've built yet. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.